So you're living now in modern, then 30 minutes after we're gonna be in in thousand years old city. They never destroyed that, which I appreciate it because a lot of tourists, everyone that comes here, they wanna go see because a building is a building. We know how it looks like now. That's what we live in right now. But a city like the Medina, where like the roads are so small, the buildings are made so different. Michelle will be taking some pictures of the Medina and she will be sharing them with you guys. Absolutely. And I'm sure we will have some food along the way because that's one thing we have done an extraordinary amount of, <clears throat> which I'm very happy. So we have a very, we had breakfast a little while ago, if you really remember, it's actually an afternoon here. So we have beautiful beach pastries. So you can pick some of them up at a local bakery. That's right. So I'm going to show you some of the pastries that we have. And I'm going to get up here and right up here. So these are the most, they're made stuffed with almond butter. They're sure. called snack. And those ones are made with butter and almond. They're one of the most delicious things. And now this tray, wow. and I'm going to come close. That one needs a close look. So we need a really close look at this. Right? Yeah, at least Shinobu, I said, Mom and Shinobu both like, we want to bite. So these are mainly made with um, nut crust base. So what's amazing with it, look at these little ones, nuts and that beautiful walnut on top. Yeah. And then Mom, I know this would be your favorite cookie. These are all made with nuts and lemon. And they are absolutely amazing. So this one I'm going to eat. Whoa. Oh, it's so soft. It is and soft. amazing inside. Yeah. And then nuts again, crusted with nuts. These have a nougat in the middle. And then I can't remember what these ones are. Uh, this one is called Le Corn de Gazelle. They're one of the most traditional. Uh, they have, it's like a filo. And all, all inside is uh, uh, an almond pa paste. Paste, yeah. An almond paste with water, uh, with rose, uh, mm -hmm. water, uh, orange. Anyways, oh. the we one that we, we put on our hand, but it is one that is similar to eat. So I don't know if you can see in the middle. Unbelievable. Those one, they've been in the game for years. Every celebration comes with those. Every celebration comes with those. It's one of the most, the best sellers here in uh, in, in, uh, in Morocco. I was going to say in Canada for some reason. And uh, yeah. And as we all know, or not everybody knows, is, and we're going to get Rita to pour some tea here in a second. Okay. We've got a couple of cups of tea. Rita's going to show us. And I know Michelle was talking about the softness. The reason why most everything is soft, it's because we don't buy a lot of stuff and put it in the freezer. We go daily and get our stuff. We have bakeries that will make fresh stuff. Once they run out of their stuff, they're done. So we pick up a lot of fresh stuff that was made. Let's say those were probably made at six o'clock in the morning. We eat them at 10 o'clock. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. One of the other favorites I've had, and these right. are the midweek. Midweek. You got and it me, right. I'm getting better with my French. It will be amazing. By the time I leave here, I'll have my French up today. So, now we, these are like a flatbread. I'm going to bring them up a little closer. The beautiful part of these is you can use them in multiple ways. Correct. So, as a sweet application, and I'm going to pick one up here, you can see how beautiful and pliable they are as a flatbread and i'm going to come closer and they're so hard to make so nowadays people just buy them you see and the differences versus at home is there's there's about 20 layers of thin dough in that so it's almost like a flat pastry it's open one on the inside too. oh yeah, we go. yeah see? what Look at the layers that come out. Yep. So I'm gonna. And people use the multiple ways. Some people put some. Hopefully, you're gonna see this. See how it comes apart in layers? Yeah. Now it's a bit cold, so that's why it's hot to cut. It's a little bit harder to cut. There. 
and we had them warm in the morning. So one of the things that we thought we would do is put a little Canada and show everybody they're just as good with sprinkling a little bit of maple. So we were exploring some international flavors today. And then what you can do is you just roll it up and then you have your tray. Unbelievable. Yeah. Someone just joined us, which is bothered. I'm saying hi to him. Yay. I'm going to back show him this because he's going to appreciate. He knows in every holiday, everything we use that type of pastries. So I know he's because he missed it. I wanted to show it to him again. Mm -hmm. He knows what's that. They, they're part of, of Morocco, I'm going to say. And these unbelievable little crackers all made with almonds and nuts. So these will be nice to have with our tea as well. I could eat these all day. These are a little bit more savory yeah. versus sweet. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about our tea and hopefully we'll have our lovely Rita come over and pour yeah. us some tea. That's Yesterday, right. one of my favorite experiences, we were in Rabat. That's right. right? That's where my, my sister lives and my beautiful niece. And the gentleman, and I'll post the video later, and he came to our table to pour us the tea. And I'm pretty sure it was, he was about three feet above the cups absolutely. and got all the tea into each of the tiny cups. So, and then Rita obviously has been doing a little practicing of this That's herself. Right. Rita so Rita's going to come over and show us if she pours the Kimanaya tea. Are you done? Hello. Rita uh, speaks English. She's just going to practice a little more. You can, you can go from the other. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. Look at that. Amazing. Rita is amazing. Thank you so much. There we go. Say hi. <laughs> That's beautiful, Hakeem Jad. This has been what we call with our teeth. Yes. This has been what we would say, Hakeem. Thank you so much. You're welcome. A family event. That's right. Um, we prepared together. So what we're going to do is we're going to sip on our tea for a few minutes. And if anybody has any questions, definitely put them into the chat box. And an extra hello to our YouTube audience that's out there. We're going to go over to Christina, who is in Ontario, and she is one of our incredible uh, good friends who has been, in, been well over a year of, of spending time with us in Atlanta, Canada Cooks. She's going to share her a Vietnamese with some different spices and some other traditional things coming in, and a noodle dish is one of the things that we love to do is make sure that everybody around the world explores food. And food is where you break bread, make friends, and sometimes even when you don't know all the language, absolutely it brings people together. It brings people together, and it certainly allows us to smile and see the joy on people's faces. So after Christina gets her recipe started, when we come back, we're going to be up in one of the other rooms, and we're going to talk about what we're going to be preparing and helping make out that we're going to have for dinner tonight. After we come back from from Fez, from Fez. So that's going to be exciting. And then after we're going to have uh, Jacqueline's going to be sharing an incredible dish that she cooked for the first time last night with a little nice. bit of a Moroccan inspiration to it. And we love that. And so Jacqueline's going to be coming in from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. So hopefully people can see how many places we have. And we see that Darlene has joined us as well. Darlene, wonderful to see you in Munchen. And we have St. John, New Brunswick. And we have my mom on from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I can also see Chernobyl from Japan. And I believe we have another gap. And in the chat box, I want to know which country you're from. And of course, our amazing Nasha Cunningham, um, who's at Santa Fe University, but originally from Tanzania. So welcome to our incredible global audience. So Christina, are you ready to share a little bit of what's going on with your noodle recipe? Yeah, hell. Um, hell. 
Um, today, I, I, I would like to cook some Vietnamese noodles uh, because with the noodles, we, we, with the water, I mean, the soup, the soup to, for the noodles, we need, to, we need the, the, the meat have to cook for many hours. So I got up really early this morning and cooked the meat for the soup to make the soup um, tasty. I cooked it for two hours. And um, yeah, I would like to show you soup. I repair it. Sorry, have a problem with the camera. Okay, okay. the soup with I repair for uh, two hours. Uh, first, we have to cook the the pork, the ribs of the pork for two hours, and now and then I re also repair some some vegetable will be cooked with this. We have uh, white radish, carrots, and some onions, purple onions with garlic. Um, now I will put some some carrots into the soup. The the soup I put it for two hours so, uh, before, so the 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 rib is very. I think it's soft enough. Yes, and now I will put with the carrot with the vegetable. I think just only it's about twenty or thirty minutes. Yeah, and then. I need to repair some garlic, some onions and garlic. Yeah. <laughs> Just only me at home so that, uh, can you see it clear? Uh, now I have to, I, 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 will, I will fry the onions. Usually we put the, 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 the garlic and the onion on top of the noodles. Yeah. Uh, here. And I, I this this kind of soup is quite simple in Vietnam. And we usually eat Vietnamese noodles for breakfast or for dinner uh, but in vietnam it, we can easily go outside to eat because many people they need most of the uh, lots of time to 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 boil the the, the pork so that sometimes i mean like sometimes if they want to eat at home they have to get up very early or they can go out for the uh, well with the We'll, uh, we'll go out for breakfast, and I think that is just simple. So that I need time to, with the onions, with the garlic, with the garlic and onions. I will come back in the few minutes. Okay. Hi, everybody. As you can see, we changed location, so we were down in the lower seating area down here a few minutes ago for our tea party. Now we've come up into the main here in Morocco and have dinner. And I can tell you, it's been one of the most amazing experiences having all of these social spaces and where everybody sits. And as you'll see behind me, look at the couch. See how many people can sit together and enjoy a meal. So this is really what it's like when we all sit together around a beautiful round table, just like at home, mom, and sit together and enjoy these amazing things. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on here, and then Hank is going to come back to help go through some of the recipes. Two of the recipes we're going to be making are very, very much Moroccan, but so it's something that his mom. So we're using her seasonings and exactly how she would make it. One of the things I was most excited about today, Hakeem says, I will be right back, Michelle. I'm going to go get us our meat. Five minutes later, he was back upstairs at the apartment and guess what? Fresh ground meat that it was ground right in front of him with all the seasoning. 
So one of the things that Kim said, so here's our beautiful setup here. See everything? Absolutely amazing. Hakeem's mom started to do a few things for me, so I appreciate that. So we're gonna sit and get this here and invite Hakeem. You can hear the family having fun behind me. Here we go. I think I cut my head off. Sorry, everybody. There we go. So we've got a lot of amazing things today. And we're going to be making a soup called the Sabbath. And um, Hakeem is going to come here in a few minutes and tell you about this soup. We had looked at that on a menu yesterday when we were in Rabat. And Hakeem said, we don't need to order it because my mom makes the best. So I'm very excited to hear, to taste his mom's recipe. So that's going to be made in this beautiful dish here. And right now it has the fava beans that are still hard because they need to be boiled and cooked in beautiful bulbs of fresh garlic. And we all know the ruling cooking club, right? Whatever it calls for garlic, add more. So there's two bulbs that are going to be in this bowl. So we're very excited about that. The other thing that's here, which is amazing, is this is the incredible beef that we picked up this morning. And he's going to talk more about that. Now, see. And I'm going to bring this up here. Oh, you're going to see Hakeem's joining us here. Sorry, I was in the okay. So there we go, everybody. You see that? And the skewers, she's already got a few of those prepared. Oh, yeah. Those we're going to have later. More often barbecue, right? Hakeem? That's right. We're going to have a barbecue. So let's talk a bit about the spices that are in this meat right now. That's so right. We so have so before we talk about the spices, I want to tell everyone, the hamburger, we walk to a butcher. There is thousands of butchers in the city. You get to there, there is pieces of meat right in there. He takes the meat, put it in a machine. He you your hamburger. So your hamburger is done right in front of you. You don't buy it in the package. And yes, we have places like Walmart and everywhere else. But when we go to regular butchers, he makes the meat in front of you, add spices to it, a little bit of onions if you want. He puts parsley, he puts salt, pepper, cumin, paprika, a little bit of hot spice. You're all good to go. But when you get home, all you do is you put it that way and you're good to go. It can't be any more fresh than this, right? That's what I love about it. So your hamburger is not packed three days ago. It's so, it's the color you want, it's red. You know what I mean? And everyone that lives in Canada long enough would know that sometimes you would buy hamburger. It's red outside, the but the inside is black. Yeah. But the so, outside dirt. The outside, the inside that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that is one thing. Second is this meat. This meat is the finest part of meat. It's called a filet. This is the most tender part. Actually, in the fact, in a butcher. If you're not a client, a regular client, you don't get to get the filet. Just an FYI. It's a long piece inside the ass. Oh. You go and you say, can I get a filet? No, I don't have. This is how it goes here. We're special with this family. Absolutely. Very lucky it's there. Our butcher, we call that our butcher because it's the one right next door to us. So we buy from him for years. So anytime there is a filet, he saves it for us. So once you have that in the barbecue, you're going to see how tender it is. So my mom is going to add those onions that you're looking at, red onions. She's going to put that parsley, oil, olive, yep. that goes on top of it. And she's adding, uh, this is coriander, dry coriander. So coriander, line them up. This is paprika. Some paprika. This is a little bit of hot spice. Hot. Just a little flavor. It means <laughs> that this is cumin. Mm. Probably some of the nicest smelling cumin I have ever had the opportunity to smell. And later we'll be going to some markets. Yes. And I think if some of you see some of the incredible experiences here in Morocco, you see the markets with the large areas full of spices. We'll be very excited. Olive. Uh, many years ago, my mom and I and some of our friends, Joan, it would be one of them, 
my sister Loanne and 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 Shelly and a whole bunch of other friends of ours, we did a cruise. It was a mother daughter cruise over Mother's Day that year, and one of the places we had to stop was in Agadir, here in Morocco. And so it is so nice to be this many years later really experiencing the country. But that's where we first saw all those beautiful spices at the markets. So it's nice to be a little closer to the country. Absolutely. This is pepper. So she's adding all that. So she's going to mix all that. We cut onions in little cubes. She's going to put it all together. Then we're going to put it on the barbecue with the hamburger. As sides, other than a salad, we didn't want to present a salad because a salad is actually very similar to Canada. We use onions, tomatoes, whatever is similar. We have some Moroccan dishes that goes as a salad that we make here. So this one is the first one that Michelle is having in front of her. It's called Bissara. So the Bissara is a form of beans. If you want to show them closer. What's yeah, the now we'll get them are. closer. You can see these ones and they're dried right now. So these are, is that the fava beans? That's right. So those one, my mom will put them in the water, okay? She will add salt and those two garlics that you're looking at, she puts them right like that. All right in. Right all the way ah, okay. And once it's all cooked, she will take a mixer and she will mix it to make it really, really soft. Right. That's it. So when it's ready like that, you put it in your plate, in your dish, you add on a cumin, salt, a little bit of hot spice. I love hot spice, so I put it on everything. And, and a drizzle of oil on it. This soup is one of the healthiest thing you can have. It's delicious. It keeps people full. But they will probably know what I'm talking about. So yeah, it's, but dear, it's actually like commenting. On yeah, it. he's commenting. <laughs> I hope yeah. you're proud of us. We're very excited. I want to say, oh, dear, is uh, Jago is going to be joining. Hi, Andrew. There's my brother. Hi, Andrew. I actually, I just remember, I have a sister with us here that she just left, and then Michelle was saying that my relationship with her reminds her of your relationship with Michelle. That's exactly just this morning, right here. Just yes, they were, yeah. Lots of banter, Andrew, back and forth between them. So, uh, yeah. And trust me, mom, his mom very much like you, smiling Absolutely. and laughing at our banter. So it's been, it's been pretty, pretty and awesome. We're not gonna forget before I get to the second oh, salad. We're not gonna forget the Canadian herb that we're gonna be using on top of the meat today. Let's not forget. So we're going to add one incredible Canadian ingredient to this meat. And this is um, from the Buckshish Farmer's Market. And it's from um, some Spiral Farm in the Buckshish area. And what we brought to make it really special for here, and I hope you can see that, we brought the ancient summer savory. And what is really amazing about what they've done in Buckshish here is they've taken this and they've made sure that it is the original organic seeds and they've grown it and it's very and i can tell you compared to it kind of smells like some of the summer savory that we grow in our backyard mom but it is very very rich so i know um the family is excited to add our canadian ingredient which the king's wife uses at home and what does she make with at home we make with it the pico so there's our acadian pico this is the number one ingredient so I today. I tried so many pico, sorry, and, and Tina makes one of the best. Tina is originally from Campbellton, Campbellton area. And I have to admit, she makes the best pico. I'm not saying that because she's my wife, Michelle knows me. I will say the truth, <laughs> but she makes the best pico. I can believe that. Yeah. So just before, we're going to go over to Jacqueline and have a look at her recipe, and then we're going to come back and tell you a little bit more. But I want to, because I'm going to get my hands dirty. So my brother's just saying that I, I can make my family a promise. The next Elkhorn gathering, he will be making these. <laughs> I also want to send a huge congratulations to my brother and my nephew and his wife, That's Charmaine, right. that my brother became a grandfather, obviously. We have our new baby, Hannah Elkhorn, that has joined our family. So really great to see him. We'll, we know Hannah will be a good eater. That's right. And of course, my nephew actually has a a bit of firm 
back in Canada. So you get some chickens running around, growing lots of amazing vegetables, and that's a great thing. So what's really interesting and easy about these, and I don't think that we think to do this at home. So as we said, the meat is already ground. We didn't go through the seasoning. So the seasoning in the meat, um, Hakeem's sister hand was saying, is the same seasoning we're going to be using on exactly. the meat. Just a little bit less cumin. We don't put a lot of cumin in the hand of it. And the butcher put it in the for us. The butcher put it in, spices up everything. So it's really ground into it. So what's really interesting to be, so not unlike taking and making a burger, but what you want to do is roll it in your hand to the size that you want. These are really fast on a barbecue too. So beautiful to serve, nice to serve as an hors d'oeuvre. And they don't get dry on the barbecue. And you just, the the roll. and these sticks are a little bit wet. So that way we know that they won't burn later. So roll it in and then you simply just hold it and you slide the stick and then make sure you roll it in your hand just a little bit because you don't want that to separate when it goes in. And there again, just like, oh, I should make mine a little thinner so they're all easier. Yeah. And one more. And we will finish rolling all of those together and those will be wonderful for us to enjoy later. So what, this would be really good with ground chicken too, I must say, mm -hmm. that would be absolutely amazing. So Jacqueline, I'm gonna put our screen share on and I know Jacqueline's got a wonderful recipe as she always does. Oh, I'm stopping my video and says sharing, putting my screen share on. Um, Jacqueline is our amazing manager of admissions at Atlantic Canada Language Academy. She just celebrated just over her one year anniversary of immigrating to Canada with her husband and their three boys. And I know one thing, my friend is one of the best cooks I've ever met in my life. But what I love about more than anything is her exploring so many new recipes. And, and one of the things that I want to remind everybody what makes the recipes the best is good ingredients. So when you start with really good ingredients and put a little love in there, you'll always get a great recipe. So Jacqueline, please share with us what's going on in your kitchen. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yesterday, I checked my refrigerator and <clears throat> I have some yogurt and sweetened condensed milk. So I searched Google to find out the recipe that contains these two things. And I, I found out one, that is yogurt cake. Um, the, the ingredients are very simple. We need yogurt, of course, condensed milk, Um, eggs and on starch uh, and this is the, the yogurt cake I made last night and now I'd like to share you the steps how to make it <clears throat> Um, here are the steps. Uh, first, we mix 400 grams of plain yogurt and uh, three eggs. Mix them together. And after that, we add 100 grams of sweetened condensed milk. And of course, we have to mix them very, very well. And after that, we add 30 grams of cornstarch mixed well. I use the sieve to make it smooth. And then spread a little olive oil mold. Then squeeze the silicon paper and press against the mold. <clears throat> After that, pour the mixture through the sieve to make it smoother and then preheat the oven for 10 minutes. And after that, bake the cake 
on the heat of 275 Fahrenheit for 55 minutes. And this is the cake. It is very, very simple to make it. However, it takes a long time to make the cake. And um, uh, after baking, the cake is soft. It tastes very, very good. I can taste yogurt. And I put it in the fridge and now it becomes firm. And um, my son, my youngest son, said that uh, he prefers the cake when it is hot than it is cold. But to me, it is both good, either hot or cold. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Jacqueline, how long did you cook it for? Um, 55 minutes. Okay. <laughs> very long, but very low, low heat, just 275 Fahrenheit. It means uh, about 135 degrees Celsius. So it takes longer time. But I'm not sure if we, we can heat it with uh, higher heat. I don't know for sure. But um, I think I think you're right, Jacqueline. It needs to stay at the lower heat for, for the ingredient. Just keep that consistency that you had. It looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It'd be nice to drizzle some honey or something on top of it, too, if you wanted to. It seems that, like, as we like to say, food is meant to be soft. Mm. Or dipped. Yeah, that looks I think, delicious. Sorry. I think next time I will steam it. I will try another way steaming. Looks great. Looks great, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for sharing. So, yeah. Christina, we thought we should check on your kitchen and see how I can see you smiling up there and see how your recipe yeah. is going. Yeah, my, my, my food is ready. The noodles is ready. Yeah. Uh, let I show you. Uh, the noodles is, is ready. Uh, I, I, I boil the noodles. Uh, it's ready. And I, the soup is, is ready, so I put some vegetable in there. So you can see this, the, 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 the pork is, is soft enough, so I put the, the, the pork in the, 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 the bowl. And this with the noodles. And put some vegetable. The vegetable is soft enough also. And the vegetable with the some cabbage here. And some of the onion and garlic. Yeah, it's tasty. Then you put on the shoe. That is a very popular noodles in my country. That's done. Where's the noodles? <laughs> ready, it's ready. Christina, you have a lot of admiration coming from Morocco right now. We, oh. I don't know if everybody can hear me. That looks so beautiful. It's so well presented too. I mean, we, we were just commenting about the way you're cutting those vegetables. It just gives you, you, you want to go try. You know yeah. what I mean? Just by looking at a certain food, you look at it and you're like, okay, it looks good. But that one you want to try. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, Christina, beautiful job. Thank you for sharing that You're recipe. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank oh. you. It's very, yeah, it's very popular in my country with the noodle, Vietnamese noodle. It's, and it's, yeah, it, it, especially it's good for the winter. The soup is hot so that it can warm your body. 
Yeah, and I love eating Vietnamese uh, noodles in Canada because the weather is quite cold for me. That is my first winter. I mean, first autumn also. It's, uh, in Windsor, the, the weather is six, six cell degree. It's quite cold for me because I'm from the tropical country. So Vietnamese soup noodles is a bad choice for me. <laughs> yeah. Yummy. <laughs> Thank you. That's absolutely amazing, Christina. Thank you so much for sharing. So for a couple of our new guests on here, if you have a recipe that you would love to share with us, we would love to have you on a guest any, at, on any given week. I will tell you, um, there's a chef, Diana Savoy from Bakhti Sharia. And she is actually was trained in France. So we're very excited. She's going to be joining us for our next two episodes in Italy. So next Sunday, I will be in Alba, Italy. And then the following Sunday, we'll be live. <laughs> we'll be live at a pizzeria in Naples. Just like that mom always three sneezes. The spices. The spices. Yeah, you sit with all the spices. And um, for us, this is about sharing sharing uh, food from around the world, having our students and our guests have an opportunity and friends to come in and enjoy each other. So one of the things that we're doing is, and you notice here, what I think what I really like in Morocco that I've experienced is everybody sits together and really does enjoy a meal. And there's that sitting down at the big table at, at level, if you'll see when we're sitting, you know, a lot of the times we're sitting at much higher tables on a regular basis. This is a much more personal experience. And for me, it's even closer for the food to my mouth. So I like that. <laughs> I can make sure I can eat a lot faster. So one of the other things that we're going to be, we're going to be making is some grilled vegetables, right? That's right. And that's the final product, how it looks like. So I just want to show them how it looks like. Oh, which is that the, the grilled vegetables? The... That's the one we're going to make with the eggplant. That's how it looks like. Oh, let me get that right. Emily, there's a little bit of glare. We'll post the picture on what that, we will post the finished product later tonight. Absolutely. Once we've had an opportunity. And that's what it's going to be with the eggplant. So I'm going to get Hakeem. Yeah. So... That one, it's it's a simple recipe that tastes delicious. It's eggplants. You see the yeah. way they're cut. Some people boil them. We grill them first till they're all cooked. We cut those tomatoes in cubes, put everything in a pan, start smushing everything with a fork, add to it garlic, oil, olive, uh, paprika, salt, and cumin. That's it. That's all. The taste is absolute. Actually, you tried a little bit yesterday. I did. And today she's going to have the homemade one for my mom. And well, we're going to send the final part. What is uh, Takota? Uh, that one is going to be Zanuk. Taktuka, she had Taktuka yesterday as well. She's the one that is only tomatoes and green peppers. Oh, that was absolutely amazing. Yesterday we ordered a, a salad that it's called the Moroccan salad. So that Moroccan salad had eight or nine type of salads, all came in in separate dishes. And I think Michelle, I told her, but even from that salad, you tried pretty much every Moroccan salad. Yeah. And I think I tried them all. You tried the tequila that the one Bader is talking about, which is the tomatoes and the green pepper. And today is the one with the eggplants and the tomato, which is called saluk. Right. So I'm going to share. There's one experience. There was one, and what type of brain was it? It was it was the the, the lamb brain. From the lamb brain. I didn't try that one. I must say, I'm going to be definitely having some lamb. But the experience of sitting down. We posted some pictures yesterday. Please go over to Atlantic Canada Cooks on our Facebook page, and you'll have an opportunity to see what that looks like. And again, it's about sharing food in breaking bread together. And I think that that's what's really beautiful. Um, after we left Rabat yesterday, we took a, a drive here to Meknes, and I can see Hakeem's mother had definitely was ready to spoil us. And we were ready to have. So when we sat down last night, and I'm gonna make sure that we post this. And if you can see that picture, 
And one of the things I want to say, I say, is the dish in the kitchen? I'm going to get Rita to grab me the dish. Can you grab me the dish? The bowl? The bowl where we put the fish feet. Um, so the whole base of this is cook couscous. And what was a surprise? And then we have zucchini, chickpeas, carrots. A couple, oh. couple of potatoes for me. A few like potatoes, because they came like potatoes. Of course, his mom, just like you would do, mom, is there. Cabbage. And cabbage. And those vegetables work <laughs> separately. The most incredible grilled onion and caramelized onion that went on top. But taste. when we dug into the middle of this, what you don't see is underneath was all braised beef. And very similar to where Christina had cooked her meat earlier, low and slow, that beef, well, might have been some of the best beef I've ever had in my life. And it was absolutely amazing. But let's give you perspective of how big the dish was that it was in. So I there we go. So that picture is now you can see it next to my head. That's how big that dish was. And that was the dish that was served for all of us together. You can serve so you it can imagine at least seven or eight chickens, one beside the other, and a couple in the middle. That's how big it is. <laughs> so that was a pretty amazing. I guess I think Jacqueline, I like her emoji. Oh, wow. Um, definitely a great check, and we'll have to make sure you come back on a trip to Morocco. I think you would be in awe of the dining experience that we're having here. But I thought when I posted the picture, I didn't think that it gave it justice to realize how large the dish was, what was served in. And again, one of my favorite experiences was the opportunity for us to sit around with the whole family here and have that together. One thing authentic that Father just mentioned that I like, that plate is not any regular plate. He's right. It's a Moroccan plate that every house has. It's called Taus. They're authentic. We we have regular plates in Canada, white ones, gray, whatever. But this type of plates, they're typical for here. We use them a lot to serve food, eat food, eat food, school, food, 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 Yeah, go for the gifts. You go for the wedding, whatever. Oh. So we get, yeah, thank you. Make nice. Unfortunately, I know I can't get one of these home to Canada because it weighs too much. I'll be a we brought. <laughs> the future opportunity, but I must say that the work in it is absolutely amazing. Thank you for, for, for calling that up here so that we can sit and learn a little bit more. So for wrapping up recipes today, we want to talk about just a just few things. Fresh fruit. We've got some beautiful pomegranate here in the safe. Okay. So, these pomegranate look a little bit different than the ones that I've seen at home, but the taste of them was absolutely amazing. Now, I don't have Peggy's wonderful sister, him, who is very good at carving a pomegranate, I might add, last night. It was actually mind-blowing. It was pretty fab, and I am not going to do it near as good as she is, so I've got that cake. So she did the We've got a couple of my tools, so let's see how good I can do. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Rita. Hakeem's wonderful niece is here. She's uh, working on her studies right. and debating on what university she's in grade 11, what she's going to be going to coming up. And then we're going to get color. her to be booked in, in, for Canada, so she will be coming to study in Canada. This is what we're hoping, right? Engineering or medical, she's so exciting. Nobody has to make that decision yet. So the top and the bottom, and then what I'm going to do is just make a cut through both sides and hopefully, yes, a good pomegranate. <laughs> there we go. And it's not red, no. It's Ooh, not red. Like it's not as red yet. as it was yesterday. Yesterday we got it right. This one. This is like three different colors on the inside of it. Well, I won't be eating, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, I came like the pink and the red one. Where, actually, that one has like the back on it. That's right. It was that. Oh, it look at that. That can happen. So let's hope for this one. 
That one, was, that, that what I just said was overwrite. Correct. Here with the eat, it happens. Sometimes you get them and. So let's try for pomegranate number two. Pomegranate, oh, this one was better. This one's got more of the pink. That's right. And the pink ones were better, sweeter than the red ones. Which they were. Yeah. And so let's see if we can get this one. There we go. I know this one's working because the seeds are already coming out of my hand. There we go. So a cut on each side. Yeah, and they're very easy to break. I don't see It's kind of dripping. I'm going to put the plate over here in my neck. You should drip it on my laptop. See the light pink versus we usually see redder back in the ones that we have in Canada. One of the other things I really love about learning more about Morocco is this country really produces most of its own food in all areas. Where in Canada, we have to import, and it, most of these exotic these type of fruit won't grow in our climate. So it's one of my favorite experiences when I'm out, is you have this chance. Now, these seeds will usually come out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spoon, and I'm just going to... We need, I'm going to need him for this one. And we My just sister was the expert. I don't know the how expert. she did it. She really was. We were all on the track. Here we go. Oh, and you do, it. there we go. And they are going around if you're curious. Yes, she just hit the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get a big plate. And one thing about fruits here in Morocco is that you go to buy something and then you hear something we don't get a lot. Oh, no, that one is not in season because all the fruits here are not from the freezer. So they pick them and they bring them to you to buy. So let's say right now, I'm looking for raspberries. No, like you're gonna have to wait till November. We don't have any right now. Instead of us getting them from a freezer from in Canada, we will have them perhaps all year long, but it's sometimes it's not the freshest one, right? Right. So here it's from the farmer to your plate. Let's talk a little bit about the important. I love that King brought that up. When it comes to health and wellness, when you're eating in season, yeah, in whatever country you're in in the world, it's one of the healthiest things you can do for your body. So that means you go with what is growing now and what's harvesting now, and you'll be able to get those other fruits and vegetables later for sure. So what you do is you switch to a different fruit or a vegetable that's in season at that time. And I can tell you, I have pomegranate everywhere right now. But I'm going to show you how beautiful these are. Let me get these ones out. And what's nice is pomegranate can be used in anything. It's great. Sprinkled on different food. So I'm going to hold these up because they're almost translucent. And you see the difference in the light, light color pink in there? Hopefully you can see how light and pink those are. And... I don't think I put that without, but I couldn't fit it all in my mouth. Those are as good as last night. But maybe they'll be eaten tomorrow. We were very surprised. When he had opened the first one, it was a very light pink. And Hakeem and I both thought mm -hmm. it wasn't going to be as sweet. And the second pomegranate was really red. To be honest with you, the first one tasted better. Right. So good to know. That will be beautiful. We'll be cutting the rest of that up, put it in the fridge, and we'll use that for the rest of our meal later. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I don't think I have a napkin, or if anybody has a napkin. Yeah. I've got a double pomegranate hands right now. Ah, oh, thank you. The entire has been very supportive to us today. Everybody She's has been very amazing. helpful. Very helpful. So we're we'll getting her ready for her Canadian experience. Exactly. We'll get a chance. We'll make like, the simple. Add a few Canadians evening in. Everybody has enjoyed their maple. And what I just want to say is from our kitchen to yours around the world, and this time from Akeem's family kitchen here in Deknez, Morocco, thank you for taking the time to spend a little bit of time with us. To my mom, it's so good to see you, mom. Miss you lots and love you. And I will see you next Sunday from Italy. And for all of our guests that are joining us, we are very excited to meet him in person. 
he's been enjoying the cooking club for well over a year and a half and we're having an opportunity and i want to give him an extra thank you because he's going to be spending the day to help me for some interpretation while the king will be busy with some other people so um we're really excited to have him spending the day with us on tuesday we'll be at the barcelo that's right at barcelo casablanca and right now we're expecting over 150 guests between our afternoon and our evening session and uh it would be nice if we had a chance to cook for everybody, but this time we just get a chance to invite them to explore education and careers with all of our partners with the Atlantic Canada Language Academy and our solution for Global Canada. And a special thank you to 3 Plus Corporation in Moncton and the City of Moncton and um, the Food and Beverage Association of Atlantic Canada for really getting excited about promoting what life is in, in especially in conjunction to careers food and education. So we would build everybody a great day. Our day is going to continue with our adventure as we go off to explore the ancient city. And we'll make sure that we share a lot of pictures with all of you. And next week, we will see you in Alba, Italy. And we'll look forward to celebrating some Italian recipes. And I'll make you a promise. I'll keep posting some of our great recipes throughout 